Hi people, it's uh, Mark on uh, Monday the 17th of October. Just uh, want to do a quick training session on uh, a couple of CBT techniques that I'd like to uh, see you, well, master, uh, if at all possible, but at least uh, get your head around for the practicals in uh, 006, for instance, and to give you an idea about what CBT can actually do. Um, I'll do it fairly quickly. I'll run through them. I'll be staring at my screen as well to make sure I get the right stuff just to give you an idea on uh, what's possible. So let me share my screen with all of you. Uh, let's have a look, see. No, that'll be me in there. That's not what I wanted to show. Okay, now that should ideally show you my uh, thought record screen. That is pretty much my, uh, my fave, if you will, my favorite uh, technique to use within CBT. It's actually uh, one from uh, Rational and Motive Therapy, good old Albert Ellis, uh, the ABC method. So if you follow this one through, you can actually use this with, uh, with pretty much every type client that has some form of rational thinking going on. The overly emotional ones might not work yet. Uh, people that are lacking uh, logical reasoning skills might not work properly. Uh, deep distressed people might not work at that time but anyone who comes in with problems that they can think quite logically about but are still stuck in some sort of emotion that's where you can use this thought record for and that's 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 many people you can use for a lot of stuff now remember that the the abc model cognitive behavioral therapy in the abc model revolves around the notion that our thoughts influence our feelings our emotions and our thoughts and feelings in, influence our behavior so if we have a certain thought or let's put it this way if something happens and we have a strong emotional reaction to that then cbt says those strong emotional reactions are caused by you know, a certain thought or thought pattern or core belief or a schema or automatic thoughts that precede that so you know the fact that we see something happen and feel devastated or maybe on the happy side as well feel really happy you know, it could be positive emotion too is based on us thinking something about that now when it comes to not so effective thoughts and not so effective feelings the thought record is a really good tool for you to uh, get your client to think about what they actually must be feeling or must be thinking and must be feeling in order to get a certain reaction from them, if that makes sense. So you're trying to get them to get clear on what it is that they're saying to themselves, why certain things are happening, and then to try and turn that around into something else, to, to restructure that. So look at this one. For instance, I'll, I'll walk you through an example. What you try and first try and do, well, actually, I'll, I'll scroll through the example. It's probably the easiest way. And I can send you this stuff by uh, by PDF uh, over email if you want to have it. So say that a client comes in uh, completely distraught because they think they're going to lose their job. You know, and that's their problem. So you might do some EAP, some employee assistance counseling. Um, and your, your client rings you, say, man, you know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so doomed. I'm going to get fired. And say, okay, well, what happened? So the first thing, the A, you know, the activating event in the ABC model is finding out what actually happens. And that is, in this case, number one, describe the situation on the thought record. So this person will say, well, I had an argument with my boss. That's pretty factual. And with this column, that's the main thing that you want to focus on. It needs to be something factual, something where you can taste, hear, touch, feel, smell, see. You know, so make sure they don't say, oh, he was so angry. You know, my boss was really angry because that's not a fact. That's an opinion. So the describe the situation column is always about stating the facts. Something happened, what happened? If I had a camera, like an old one with a little wheel, and I was recording your life, what happened? What can I see, hear, touch, taste, smell? So once you've got that clear, very often clients will be able to come up with the mood that they have. So A, B, C, activating event, beliefs, consequences. Generally, they're very aware of what the consequences are. So go there first, and that's actually number two on you know, the thought record. So get them to describe their mood. So they had an argument with their boss, and they felt high anxiety, in this case, 80% in this example. So you go, okay, well, that's cool. So I know what I felt. You know, I know what I did. 
So therefore, the anxiety is related to that specific event. Now, that makes complete sense. Now, the third thing that you want to do when you've got that thought record there is, is find out, so yeah, is find out what the, the thoughts were or the, the, the automatic thoughts that were associated with that sense of anxiety. Now, that's where it gets tricky because, because thoughts are so automatic, and that's something for another workshop, really. Uh, generally, we're not aware what we're thinking before we actually feel something. So you've had this argument with your boss, and without really thinking about it, you come out of out the conversation feeling completely anxious. Now, you wouldn't have a clue what you just thought in order to feel that certain way. Well, that's the task of you know the counselor to find out what it is that actually was going on in the client's mind in order for them to feel so anxious based on that event of having an argument with their boss. In that column, number three, identify, and identify automatic thoughts or images. You can make them come up with anything. It could be one letter uh, of one word expletives. It could be sentences. It could be statements. It could be anything. But the whole point about it is that you can find out and start to think about what it is that they might have been thinking or were thinking in order for them to feel that anxious. And generally, it will have to do something with, for instance, I'll get fired, or he's so stupid, or I wish I can tell him off, or, you know, like I said, the one word expletives. And down the bottom there in that list, you can actually see you know, the questions that you could ask uh, the client. See, and um, when you do that, you know, clients will generally start to brainstorm with you and things will come out. You know, um, maybe you'll have to prompt them first for the first one. Um, now, what was it that you thought as soon as you came out of the conversation? It's like, oh, so I'm doomed. Well, okay, great. Write that down. I'm doomed. Yeah, or whatever it is. Ultimately, when you do this, and like I said, I'm going through it fairly quick, but you'll be able to come up with a bunch of statements, a bunch of words, uh, a bunch of beliefs, really. Yeah, oh, this, this is so many a time that this happens, or it always happens to me. You know, something that the client will say, that will make it pretty logical that they felt anxious. And then you can link that as the counselor said, great, you know, if, if I had a boss, uh, an argument with, with my boss, and, you know, I would think what you just told me you were thinking most likely, man, I would feel anxious too. Now, in this thought record, column number four allows you to work with a client on facts that actually support that thought. And what you want to do is get the hot thought. So the one that actually, the question would be, which one of those thoughts that we've all written down, all those things, those words, those phrases, which one do you think is the one that causes you the most anxiety or caused you the most anxiety? And generally, clients will be able to pick one. Yeah, there's always one. Now, the I will get fired in this case is, is the one that's really hot. It's, it's the hottest one. Now, you pick that one just for the sake of the exercise and go with the client to the facts pro and facts con. So what facts actually support that? And that allows the client to realize that what they were thinking and what they were there for feeling is not stupid. You know, it's based on something. You know, otherwise, they wouldn't be thinking it. It's not like they just grab it out of thin, you know, the thin blue, blue air. Yeah, so those examples in, in number four, in this case, it, you know, support the client's idea that they will get fired and therefore make them feel anxious. Where the cognitive behavioral element, you know, so we've done A, activating event. We've done C, that's identify the rate and rate the mood. We've done B, we looked at the belief, so A, B, C. Now D is all about disputing, disputating, you know, whatever happened. And that's that number five column. Now you start to get to dispute whatever you know, the client was thinking. So, well, how does, you know, what sort of facts are there? What sort of things are there out there that actually don't support the idea that you will get fired? You know, so where is your thought that makes you feel so anxious? Actually, not entirely true. And if you do CBT well, um, then you'll be able to, to get this out of them. You know, and in this case, it's, well, I got an excellent performance report you know, a couple of weeks ago. So that doesn't make sense then to think that you're going to get fired just because you've had an argument. Ultimately, when you do this well, and again, I'm going through it quick. We can do one-on-one -on -one if you want. But ultimately, if you do this well, you'll be able to, in number six, come up with a more balanced perspective. And that's the E, you know, the ABCDE model, the more effective, effective or more efficient way of looking at stuff. And what I'd like to do generally 
is uh, to go through it. Hey, Shanine. Hi. I'm already in my little story, so I'll finish that one and uh, we'll get through another one. Is that okay? Yeah, that's cool. Sorry, oh. I'm late. No, you're right. I'm just, uh, can you me mute yourself out? It might make it a little bit easier. Have you got the mute button on there somewhere? Otherwise, I'll hit Sorry? Have you got the mute button? Otherwise, I'll uh, have to mute you out somewhere. Let me see. I should be able to mute you. Uh, audio options. Oh, no, you're muted. All good. So I'll, I'll just keep talking on this one and then I'll get in the other one and uh, unmute yourself. So with uh, number six, you know, generally a good way to do it is to to start a session with although or even though. Yeah, so when your client is working through something, so I've had this massive argument with my boss, I think I'm going to get fired. Yeah, and you've done that, that facts pro and facts con one. You can help them come up with a more um, balanced thing by saying, well, well, even though you know I've had yeah uh, an argument, I also had a very good you know performance review recently, so there is no evidence that I will get fired. And generally, you, obviously, you want to come up with a statement that a client believes. Now, what that will do over time, and you really want to start working with this sort of stuff, what you'll find is that clients' anxiety levels generally go down. You know, and that's the whole idea. Uh, what you're trying to do with these thought records is teach clients that they might feel really anxious, but that they actually have a fair bit of control about through their thinking, uh, adjust their anxiety down. So they might feel a sense of relief, you know, a high sense of relief, or they might find that they feel less anxious, you know, which is already a win in itself. And you can use that with, with a lot of people. Now, in your practicals for 006, you know, if you're up, up to that one, you can definitely use that you know, in order to, uh, to get the client to think <coughs> about things they are saying and feeling. Now, these ones, I'll put them up on, uh, on good old EVO. Yeah, use that example. All these books, all these examples come out of a book uh, that I highly um, recommend you buy. And I'll have to check the exact title, but I'm pretty sure it's Mind Over Mood. Mind Over Mood. Let me have a quick look. Yep. So the book is called Mind Over Mood. Change how you feel by changing the way you think. And it's written by Podesky or something. Dennis Greenberger and Podesky. Mind Over Mood. Yep, change how you feel by changing the way you think. Dennis Greenberger and Christine Podesky. It's it's a very worthwhile book um, having um, as a practitioner, but it's actually more a client book, so it's even more useful for that one. Uh, you can actually work through it with clients uh, as such. It's more like a, a self-help book, but very much CBT-ish. And these examples come out of that book. So if you're really interested in that sort of stuff, then uh, I would suggest you you buy it. It's uh, You can get it on Amazon. It's, it shouldn't be too expensive. And work with it because it's it's an awesome, you know, the ABC technique is an awesome technique in, uh, in CBT to use. All right. Oh, well, let me see if I can unmute you, Shanine. We'll have a bit of a chat. Uh, just are you still on there? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Just unmute your mic so we can have a chat. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? You all right? Good. Yeah. Now, this one, have you ever used thought records at all or not in uh, in, in your practicals or, or not not like this probably, eh? No, not like this. Ah, okay, cool. So, for you, I'll, I'll put all everything up on, uh, on EVO. I'll we'll put all the documents in there as well. It's worthwhile. Maybe just look at the beginning bits of... Uh, you know, of, of this, this training session and work with a thought record at some stage. It's a cool tool to have. Um, I'll actually put some extra questions in there you know, that will allow you to work with clients more and, and that example is in there as well. So that's, that's a cool one. Um, what I want to do too, I'll bring up another one. Oh, hang on. No, that's all right. Now, decatastrophizing. Have you ever done a decatastrophizer? Have you ever worked with that one? No, nah, doesn't no. mean anything. Oh, it's, it's another one of those beautiful CBT techniques. So decatastrophizers are, are good for clients that come up with some sort of scenario that is sort of the end of the world for them, if that makes sense. You know, uh, generally what people will say, ah, look, <laughs> the ones I'm getting left, right and centers now, I'll never finish my course, you know, because it's only nine weeks and I'll never get there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, and what we can do that about life in general. You know, it's like, I'll never be a good counselor because, you know, I've had so many unsuccessful assessments or, oh, you know, I'll never be able to do this, blah, 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 blah. So 
generally what you'll find in, in clients when they come in and they're serious about it because otherwise they wouldn't be in. You know, they think that something really seriously bad is going to happen and that's why their world is now falling apart. You know, whereas it's not even certain that that is going to happen, but that's what they've been telling themselves. And that's that's fair enough. Now, a decatastrophizer is another good CBT technique to get some perspective in clients and, and help them to, to see that some things might actually be not that bad. And I'll go through the example probably straight away because that makes it easier. Now, these things, these are worksheets, so I'll send them to you as well, everyone. Um, so when you look at this one, for instance, you know, uh, someone comes and says, oh, look, I'm, I'm feeling so sick. Uh, my, my health is never going to get better. No, that's that's obviously something that would set off a fair bit of anxiety. Yeah, yeah rightly so. Um, the decatastrophizer, you want to make sure that your clients actually are as specific as possible in, in what they're saying because they say, oh, you know, nothing is ever going right for me. It's all going wrong. I'll never be happy or whatever. It's like, yeah, right. Okay, can't really do much with that one in CBT terms. But especially when it gets uh, you know, to health or, or work or whatever, you know, something like that, you can become quite specific on what's going on. And that's the whole idea of this, uh, this exercise. So, yeah, try and get them to state as specifically as possible, you know, something that they uh, think is going to happen that's really bad. Now, would you have an example, for instance, Shani, for yourself? Can you just think of one that you, just because you've been reading 006 and are already way past it, you go, oh, yeah, I recognize that in myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like some, like you, you want an example of, of um, like something that is, well, something you're worried about that that might happen, and it could be anything. And if it's too personal, don't share it. But you know, something that you know, you sometimes overthink you know, in terms of worries, like oh my gosh, you know, what are your predictions, or what is a prediction of of something you fear will happen that you just can't get out of your head, and and seems really serious. Um, that. Pretty much that I won't finish this course, even though like I know that I will. Like it's just, but it, my brain is going. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so okay, so the the statement, you know, what you the catastrophe is that you will not be able to finish the counselling diploma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty pretty specific. Yeah. yeah. So how okay, how how awful would that be on a scale from zero to a hundred? Um. 90, 100% being super bad, obviously. So, yeah, if, it would if you probably be like yeah? 90%, I reckon. Yeah, pretty bad. Because I've put so much into it. Like, yeah, right. Okay. So, now, yeah. Right. So, if you would have a client, and that, that could be a real case scenario, hey, it's like I've, I've had clients like that, especially in EAP counseling, the employee assistance stuff, which is all really brief. You know, and they, they come to the phone and say, I'm going to get fired. To know, mm -hmm. oh, okay, and that's that's pretty much you know their their welcoming statement is like okay, what can I do for you today? It's like oh, I'm I'm going to lose my job. So oh, okay, how so? You know, and then the whole the whole story starts unraveling, and obviously you have to do some PCT on that one and get the story out. But ultimately, their statement or their their catastrophic statement is I'm going to lose my job. Yeah, and in this case, in your case, would be well, I'm not going to finish the diploma. Now, as a CBT technique, and again, it's a simple one, so it might be sometimes it's too simple for really serious issues, but you can you can try it out. You know, the whole idea is to get people to have a different perspective on things. You know, so mm -hmm. are they really going to lose their job? Are you really not going to you know, finish your, your diploma? Well, those that's why these, these sort of decatastrophizing techniques are for. So the first one would be how likely is it that this is going to happen. That could actually be a question you would ask your client. So in your case, you know, how likely is it that you are not going to finish, you know, your diploma? How, it's, how realistic is that? Um, I reckon I probably will finish it because yeah. I've got like a all set out. Um, right. So yeah. it's, in that sense, it's it's not very likely because you've already done all your preparation, you know how many assessments you need to finish. You know, so is, is yeah. that is that fair to say? So it's it's not very yeah. likely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, but let's let's keep you know continuing on those. Like, you know, what what is the worst case scenario? Well, I'll I'll prompt you that one. The worst case scenario I could think is, well, I've done all my planning and something really bad happens because of which I still can't finish my course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then. 
I'll feel even worse because now I've done all this work and I've done all this planning and now my, my fear is still, you know, turning into reality, which is totally crap. So that, that's just hundred percent bad, you know? So, okay. Yeah. Now, what would be the best case scenario? Well, the best case scenario is that I actually finish ahead of schedule, for instance, you know, that I beat my own schedule and I'm done in about a month. You know, it's like something like that. So, all right, okay, cool. Yeah. Now, the whole idea is, you know, for those questions to be asked of a client is to, to get them to think about other things than what they think is the only road, if that makes sense, you know. So, when I get a client that says, look, I'm going to get fired and they're totally convinced that that's going to happen then if that is what is going around their heads, obviously feel quite bad. You know, the whole idea is, is like, well, how do you know for sure? You know, that, that would, that's always my, my question. How do you know? Is it hundred percent? Do you know a hundred percent sure that you're going to get fired? Well, the answer mm -hmm. is nine out of 10 times is no, they don't, but there's a fair chance. So yeah, okay, that's, that's fair enough. And we'll talk about that. Now, obviously, in order to give your brain some some food and give it some feedback and make sure that it's not that bad, you want to give them options, you know, because if they can only look at, I'm going to get fired or I'm not going to finish my diploma, well, that's pretty horrible. And that obviously it releases, you know, releases a fair bit of adrenaline and cortisol and all sorts of bad fuel hormones. You know, so the whole idea is to give them a different perspective on stuff. And that's where these questions come in. You know, so you can do the worst case scenario. You can do the best case scenario. You know, what would your friend say to you about that worry? You know, your, your best mate would probably say, look, Shanine, don't worry. You know, you've, you've planned it all out, girl. I mean, of course you're going to finish this thing. You know, so you know, that would probably soothe you a little bit. On the other hand, a good way to, to do this with clients is actually, well, let's suppose that you're not going to finish. You know, let's, let's just suppose that this worst case scenario is going to happen what would you then do to cope? You know, what would you then do in order to make things better for the future? You know, what would be plan B? You know, would you know? Because you've obviously, I think you, you would have thought about that. So say that you're two units or three units short of finishing just because of circumstance or whatever. You know? Yeah. What, what will you do then? Um, I would probably look for, like, to see whether I can um, still do those units, like, next year or something. Yeah. Um, find somewhere where I can complete those units so that I can um, still have my diploma. Yeah, cool. So, you know, and, and that's often what a lot of people don't see when they're in this, like, oh, the worst thing is ever, worst thing is ever, worst thing ever is going to happen to me. You know, they don't see that sort of stuff. And that's why this technique, you know, when you do it well, actually works quite well with a lot of people because they start to see that there are opportunities. And it's, it's a lot of phone conversations I've actually had with students around this, you know, when it comes to study. Because so many people were totally convinced that if they can't finish, that's it. You know, they're done. It's like they will not have their diploma. And my statement was always like, well, you know, you won't have your diploma with us. But, you know, nothing stops you from signing up with someone else and finishing it there and then, you know, crediting whatever you've done with us and, um, you yeah, know, getting your diploma after all. And they go like, really? Oh, and the amount of students that I've had that said, oh, no, I thought that was it. You know, I would have to start from scratch again. So, no, of course not. you got credits for units that you finished. Now, and just talking through that sort of alleviated so much of their anxiety and stress, you know, that they felt in, in having to do as much as possible. Was, even though it would be you know, not fun, it wouldn't be the end of the world. That, that was the whole idea. And I think mm -hmm. that's where this catastrophizing technique can, can work quite well for especially can you actually see that screen with the with the stuff up is that does that show yeah yeah okay cool. yeah so you know not only can you talk about coping stuff you can also talk about all right now what is going to happen or what can you do or what can you say to yourself you know that will put this whole catastrophe of yours in a slightly different light and it's it's very similar to the abc model you know you would say something to yourself well even though there is a chance that I might not make it, you know, I know I will have second options, you know, for me to pursue. And that's, that's a slightly leaning on the negative side one, but you know, a more positive uh, could be is like, well, even though I might be thinking about not finishing, I've put so much, you know, preparation work in place that I'll probably finish anyway. So it's not a big deal. Yeah. Or, uh, even though I might feel nervous about it, I am fairly convinced that I'll actually make it. Yeah. And when you then go back to say, well, you know, relating back to that anxiety feeling of 90%, how do you feel now? Well, generally people will say, I feel a lot better. Or actually, I don't feel that anxious anymore. You know, it feels slightly better for me. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that is a good exercise to do because, again, the whole idea for clients is generally that they feel out of control. And if you can give them a sense of control through working with them and making them come up with you know, alternative resources or other ways of doing stuff or uh, alternative ways of, of finding a solution or actually making them realize, not making them realize, helping them realize that it is actually not that bad as they thought it was, you know, then they feel better and go away and feel a sense of control of their own lives rather than life just happening to them. It makes sense, hey? Yeah. So that's that's a cool one to to add to your database as well. Yeah, you know, as a and again, you've done it already, Shanine, so don't worry about it. But for the people that are still looking at 006 prax, you know, a decatastrophizing technique, throw one in because that's major marks already straight away for me. And uh, again, I'll attach all this to the, the recording anyway. And the last thing I want to go through is this one. Have you ever looked at a list of cognitive distortions or do you know of them, Janine? Was it through reading 006 maybe that there were a couple in there? There were a couple in there, um, <laughs> yeah. but I don't think that it was an actual big list nah, like this. No, I don't think so. It was a little while ago that I did 006. I'm trying to yes, remember. Yes, but obviously you remember everything because it's completely yeah. sharp and yeah, all fresh in your head. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know how it works. I remember I'm, snippets. Look, it's a bit of a brain melt with every all the information. Don't worry. I still have to grab my books every now and then if I do a session with a client, and I think, oh my gosh, how do I deal with that again? It's like I still, I still grab for my books. Don't worry. <laughs> so a couple that I want to go through just for the fun of it, because this is generally what happens in people. Uh, and once you start to listen for them, and that, that's sort of the key message in this one, start listening for this stuff because it, it, you hear clients make statements like this, left, right, and center. You know, all or nothing thinking. Oh, nothing ever goes right. You know, or uh, say that you're on a, on a diet or something and you've actually you know, had a biscuit. It's like, oh, my whole diet has gone to, you know, to smithereens now because I've had one biscuit or whatever it is. Or you know, now that I uh, didn't pass this, this assessment, oh, my whole unit is screwed up. Yeah, you know, so a lot of people will do some sort of all or nothing thinking, very black and white. And it's good to, to be aware of that because when it is, you can do either an ABC model or a decatastrophizer on it because very often that'll lead to very strong emotions, positively or negatively. Yeah, uh, An overgeneralization is another really random one. Um, very often you can recognize those by people that say always, never, or nothing. You know, they'll, they'll use generalizing words. Oh, nothing ever works out for me. Like, seriously, nothing? No, you got out of bed tomorrow, this morning, didn't you? Well, never say that to a client because that's, that's a bit disrespectful. But very often, you know, people will say, oh, you know, this whole course, you know, I haven't been able to do this course at all. And you look at all the successful assessments and say, well, not really true. But if that's in their head, you'll have to work with that. And then, obviously, facts that prove them wrong will help them, you know, to put their thinking right a little bit. Uh, a mental filter is a big one uh, where, for instance, you know, you do a, a public speaking engagement and you know, 10 people come up afterwards and telling you how great it was and how much they got out of it. And one person actually tells you they thought it was a bit boring. Who are you going to remember? Well, it depends on how you're inclined, but very often, you know, people will put a mental filter on and will think of this public speaking engagement as the worst thing ever because one person out of a crowd of 100 you know, told them it was a bit boring, even though all the rest told them it was really good speech. You know? And it's, it, we do that. We, we tend to do that. We put mental filters on stuff. And again, having a reality perspective on that one and discussing that one with a counselor or as a counselor, you know, hearing, you know, hearing clients utter mental filter stuff you know, is, is a good one to pick them up on. Yeah, many people are very good at discounting the positive, uh, so they they will not listen for the good stuff, which is very much like a mental filter. Uh, they they will not think that what was done so well is actually so good at all, uh, and they say, "Ah, nah," you know. I say, "Well, you done that well, didn't you?" I said, "Ah, nah, it was nothing." You know, I was like, "Well, really?" You know, I thought it was pretty bad, not pretty good actually, and not so bad as you think it is. And many people will not do that, and that's again. You now your job as a counselor is to pick them up on that one and say, well, where, where else have you done things really well? You know, because this, this has gone well. Where else have you done that? Uh, jumping to conclusions is one of my favorites. Um, a lot of people will do what I call mind reading and fortune telling. You know, so they'll be able to predict what another person is going to think in the future. Oh, he'll really be mad at me. 
Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. And uh, fortune telling is another one. Yeah. But oh, I'm definitely going to fail that exam or oh, that assessment that I handed in yesterday. Oh man, you're definitely going to mark that one unsuccessful. Yeah, so, oh, geez, really? And that happens. That happens often. I will get fired. Yeah, it, it happens left, right, and center. It's, and I generally, it depends a little bit on, on the rapport I have with the client. But if that happens in, in my practice, I generally will make a little bit of fun out of them if the rapport is really good and say, oh, geez, it sounds like you're really good at telling, you know, the for, uh, being a fortune teller and you're predicting the future. <laughs> Can you predict my future for me? It's like, you, you seem to have that sussed. You know, you just told me that that person is going to mad, be mad and you're going to get fired. And uh, you know what? If, if I buy a lottery ticket, am I going to win? And they sort of look at you and say, well, what do you mean? So, well, you're predicting the future here and apparently you're very good at it. So it's because uh, it made you feel really bad. So can you do something for me that makes me feel really good? And they sort of start to snicker and sniggle a, a little bit. It's like, uh, no. So great. Okay, let's look at what you're now actually doing. You're predicting the future. Now, how do you know that's true? Now, and then it's back to a decatastrophizer or back to an ABC model. Um, magnification is a big one. Yeah, uh, so... Uh, they've done something minor badly, and then it's this major thing that they've done super badly. You know, you'll hear people do that too. You know, so they'll exaggerate whatever is going bad and, and minimize whatever is going really uh, well, you know, just because their mindset is just on things being bad, and it happens so often. Uh, emotional reasoning is a big one. You know, people feel a certain things, and because they feel a certain way, that thing is actually a fact. Yeah, you know, the the example they give here. Well, I feel really anxious to jump on a plane, so um, flying must be dangerous. Well, where'd you make that one up? You know, but it it happens quite often. So it's emotional reasoning. Just because you feel a certain way about something doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. But that's what a lot of people think. And as a as a counselor, you need to be able to pick up on that one because it's a good one for an ABC uh, model. Mm -hmm. Ah, shoot statements. That's what I pick people up on quite often. Should, must, or to, got to, have to, need. You know, all those statements indicate that something is wrong in their thinking because who told them? You know, based on what? You know, is that? You know, is, is it the Bible? Is it the law? Is it your mum? Is it your dad? Is it your imaginary friend in your head? Your imaginary enemy in your head? You know, where did you get that from? Who told you? Yeah, and sometimes it's it's okay because it's correct. You know, if it's based on a spiritual belief or based on you know anything else, that that could definitely be you know that that's how they want to live. But very often, shoot statements are based on some sort of vague idea about how things are supposed to be done, and it doesn't necessarily have to be done a certain way. You know, there's there's plenty of ways to do something. So I'm always trying to get people to this. This is what I call necessity language. You know, it needs to be done a certain way. It has to be done a certain way. Or to have to got to should. Whereas I try to get them to what I call possibility language, you know, could, you know, decide, opt, choose, um, something, some words like that. You can do certain things a certain way. It, not that you should do them, but you can, you can choose to do them a certain way. And it generally makes it a lot lighter. And the last two, yeah, the last two I'll actually discuss because then my time is up, is labeling. You know, so a lot of people will stick a negative label on something that happened that's not so good. You know, so they made a mistake and they call themselves a loser. Or they got a, an assessment back unsuccessful and they call themselves a failure. Or you know, they didn't make some sort of cut and therefore they're no hopers. You know, a lot of people do that. And again, as counselor, you need to be able to pick them up on that one and say, well, where do you do that? You know? And they do it with other people as well. Uh, you, know, you hear people talking about their boss as an absolute a-hole or whatever. You know, it's just, why? I mean, where'd you pick that up? And obviously, it's, it's, it's because of what they're thinking. Yeah, and the last one, that's, that's a big one, is personali personalization and blame. A lot of people take on the problems of the world as being caused by them. And, and therefore, they are to blame for something. And that's, you know, especially people with a, with a lack of self-worth, it's a major issue. You know, because the fact that, you know, I don't know, your children didn't do well at school is not your fault necessarily. You know? Whereas I've had people say that. It's like, I'm such a bad mother, father, whatever, you know, because my children are not doing well at school. It's like, okay, you know, let's, let's discuss that. You know, it's, it's not your fault. But very, very people, very 
many people will do that, especially when they're depressed or anxious. You know, it's depression. It's all their fault. Yeah. Like, I just feel horrible. Why? Well, because my friend doesn't want to see me anymore. And it must be my fault. Whereas maybe the friend just you know, has reasons for not doing that. Yeah. And again, there's, there's plenty of ways to, to uh, undercut that and look at it. So again, those three, you know, so uh, cognitive, this is actually called cognitive restructuring. And there's, there's a bit more in that where you can challenge that one. There's information in there that I'll leave because I just have to be aware of time a little bit. Um, so look at those one, cognitive restructuring, uh, the ABC model, you know, the one that I've discussed, very first one, and the decatastrophizer are three awesome uh, CBT techniques that, you know, you can study further. And I would suggest that you just add them to your toolbox because they're really cool tools to have and start working with. Are they, are they the only ones? Nah, absolutely not. There's plenty. But take a couple and, and make them your own. Learn how to work with them properly in clientele. And then you'll start to become pretty good at it. And then you can start to add a couple other techniques on top. But at least you'll have three or four basic CBT tools in your, in your toolkit, which is always a good idea. Yeah. Well, like I said, and you, you didn't hear, hear that, uh, Shanim, but my favorite is the ABC model, the thought record. It's such a cool, you know, it's such a cool tool to work with. And most clients take to it quite easily. Now, does it work in every circumstance? Nah, absolutely not. But very often it does. And it's, it's a cool idea, you know, a cool way to get clients through a session, you know, coming out, feeling a lot better about, about themselves. And then you can think about what else you can do next session. So, and that's what I pretty much wrote for everyone in uh, in the 006 prax. You know, make you know, from each therapy, from narrative, from solution focus, from CBT, from ACT, make three or four of their techniques, you know, your own, master them, you know, and, and make them your own. So you've got a toolbox with about 15, you know, 12 to 15 good techniques in there from about four therapies. And then you can do a pretty solid session. You know, it's, it's, you can do a pretty good session about everything. And slowly but surely start to specialize and get better at other stuff. But once you, or un unless you sort of master a couple of those, when you're sort of constantly fumbling, trying to do a PCT style session, and it's cool, but it's, you know, it's way better if you can add a couple of things in, in the box and just learn how to work with them. You got any questions about this? Is there anything on, on CBT or anyone? Now that I've, you know, I've got you on the line anyway, but you know, certain techniques that you find you want a little bit more you know, clarity on, or you're pretty good. No, that's uh, that. That all looks really interesting. I'm gonna so that last section was out of the book that was written down the bottom, was it? The Feeling Good Handbook. Uh, is that a book? No. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, so yep. I'll look into that. And the other one was Mind Over Mood, wasn't it? Yeah, Mind Over Mood. It's it's an awesome book. I've got it on my bookshelf. I got an older older edition, but it's the same thing still. It's uh, you know same book. And it, it talks it talks you through with some client examples. It talks you through the whole idea of getting clear on the facts, getting clear on the feelings, getting clear on the thoughts, and, and what to do with them. So it's it's a really easy to understand for you and for clients. You know, book to sort of start working with uh, with cognitive behavioral basics. Really, it's more behavior therapy, but it's it's also cognitive because it looks at thinking. So it's it does a bit of everything. Yeah. So it's uh, start working with those ones, and then uh, yeah, you'll be sweet. Awesome. Thanks for that. No props. Anything else or uh, good to go? No, that's pretty much everything. Good to go. Cool. Yeah, I just got a Thanks message that I'm. Me uh, that. Yeah, I just got a message that I'm supposed to ring you in 15 minutes. Are you good to keep going though? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, <laughs> um, I think that I'm pretty good. I just okay. need to get motivated. So watching this sort of helped motivate me to get something else to you honestly at this stage of the game and I'm, I'm talking to everyone else because i've had this comment more often you don't need motivation anymore you just need to do it yeah that's yeah it's, exactly. It's, exactly it's exactly you don't count your assessments divide them by nine there's no motivation you just need to finish them it's like you know, just do them it's yeah. motivation is